This is Lizzie from Let Zoe Spoil You. And Sagira from Sagira Salutes You. And together, we are Newbie versus Weeaboo. Sagira, Newbie. Lizzie, Weeaboo. It's, it's Newbie, newbie versus Weeaboo. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're back again. <laughs> and both our voices are being recorded. Yay. Yay. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a weird time. I Understatement, think I think. We're, we're literally going into the apocalypse. Ironic but even from what I chose, but you know. Well, yes, I was going to bring that up, but um, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah. I, I what, Well, let's start from the beginning. First of all, we had conventions. And then... We didn't. To, then I... <laughs> Well, yes, but also I had a chest infection from which you've been hearing the last episode because I was just kind of in the midst of it. And then you had colds. Yeah, I got a chest infection and a sinus infection and a virus. Then you threw yourself down the stairs. Yeah, well, I got signed off work because I was dying. And then just as I was about to return to work, I threw myself down the stairs. Do you think it was subconscious? Like, no work, man. Ah, yeah, because I'm already going to say, I'm healthy. Oh, no, I better fall down the stairs. I mean, luckily, I didn't have a broken foot. But seven hours in A&E was fun. Also fun. Especially, like, this was just before Corona had gone mental. And there was, like, people coming in to be checked for coronavirus. So I was just, like, in my wheelchair, shoved in a corner for seven hours while people who breathed funny were coming in. Like, at the time, I was like, oh, they're just breathing funny. My foot has swollen up to the size of a freaking cantaloupe and went the wrong direction. And I can't use it. But, you know, x-ray says it wasn't broken. I did just tear through all my ligaments and sprain my foot. So I couldn't walk for nearly three weeks now and I couldn't walk and then the coronavirus hit and I was like wow am I getting some cabin fever because I can't move and now I'm not allowed to go anywhere and just as I started to heal up yesterday I took my first normal walk around the block for my physio and I was like you know what I can go out again I can walk around then the lockdown was issued yeah. <laughs> well you can still go out for daily exercise as long as you're not in a giant group doing it so you can still go. There we go. Cool. So don't, can't go with all my friends, you know, the big group of them. But, you know, I can go for a all walk. All my friends. All my friends. Let's all go for a walk. Woohoo! Yeah, no, I don't have that many friends. I don't often go out with a large group of friends anyway. So, yeah, it's not really an issue for me. No. <laughs> but, you know, I was enjoying the fact that I could walk about. And now I'm like, I could walk again. Oh, oh, well. Just go out and say... It's a daily exercise. Yep. And all will be well. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, now that we're in a UK lockdown and we're not allowed to go, you know, see anybody and we have to social isolate, we thought, well, recording podcasts is going to be fun because you can't come to mine. I can't come to yours, which means my giant collection of things cannot be watched because you can't exactly magically summon my DVD collection to your house. Uh -huh. <laughs> but... We can watch Netflix. Yes, but Netflix, as I've discovered from my own time recently, from having three weeks off of a dead foot, has some very hit and miss when it comes to anime. I've been trying to watch all the Netflix anime and boy, are they bad. I have watched some utter shiser when it comes to anime recently. Awful things like Hero Mask, which is like... It's set in an alternative London and there's a bit of a, like, there's a conspiracy going around and crimes being committed. And our main character is called James Blood. <laughs> and you're just like... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And it wouldn't end. It just kept going. And I'm like, this does not need to be 24 episodes of espionage and James Blood trying to find people with weird face masks. And <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. This is so bad. And then I, oh, Cagaster of the eye of the insect fortress, like literally the most ugliest anime you'll ever seen in your life. It's all that horrible CGI, but there's CGI animes. And then there's Cagaster. And I'd gone through about five of these and I was just like, Asterisk Wars, no, you're poo. Ido, oh god, you're bad. Hero Mask, god. Sword Guy, awful. And I'm like, I'm gonna lose Faith. Luckily, I saw Beasters, and then Faith was restored. So I was like, that's good. But I was thinking, right, we need to choose something from Netflix to watch that I don't hate. <laughs> 
So what did you do? Um, well, what I decided to go with is I went with this particular choice because I wanted you to watch it anyway. It was going to be one we watched once we hit the 90s. There are some key films I would have liked you to have seen before this, but unfortunately... As I say, my, my DVD collection and my Blu-rays can't just magic them away to your house. And so I chose Neon Genesis Evangelion because it was one of the most influential and well-loved and brilliant animes ever made. And it changed the face of the anime scene when it came out. And I love it. So I thought, yay, I will make you watch it. And it's quite apt <laughs> for yes. what's happening immediately or well, not immediately no but the way that they were talking about the angels and stuff it's like oh that sounds like a virus <laughs> <laughs> it's mm. very japanese in its using a semi not too distant kind of post-apocalyptic society to work through their social issues but Oh, it's so much more, it's so much more. And I kept thinking of all the things that were happening and thinking, you're going to ask me questions and I'm going to have to just go, going to have to wait and see. Going to have to wait mm. for that one. No, you're going to have to wait for that one. It's like on the first, like we watched the first two eps and on the first two episodes alone, I'm like, no, I can't give away too much. But, well, yeah. Um, I was going to say, you talk too long, I forgot. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, I can continue Stop being talking. Interesting. I rewatching this, the first two episodes. I rewatched this, and holy moly, did I get goosebumps and butterflies in my stomachs, remembering how good this is and what was to come. I, I literally felt my stomach going blah 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 blah. Remember how this leads into this bit, and I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to see that again, and I cannot wait for Neek to see it and see what she thinks of that. And what, what year was it made? That's what I was meant to ask you. What year is it made? It's 1995. And it's set in 2015. Yes, which I totally forgot. I, I remember it when 2015 happened and we all had the like, oh my God, it's like, it's the Ava year. Like um, Back to the Future when it was a uh, yeah. year. We yeah. Were, ah, Back to the Future. Yeah, 2015, we were like, oh no, you know, the third apocalypse is meant to be coming. Well, it waited a couple of years to 2020. The first episode is called Angel Attack. Yep. It opens with catchy music and naked people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the opening, I'm watching it every time. I still remember all the bloody words. I can't believe it. Like, I can sing along. And I always remember my favourite line, Soto fureru mono, which is desperate for something to touch. And I'm like, I know, I know, because people have just got such, like, bad connections to each other. You're just desperate to have familiar bonds and to touch someone, but not in a sexy way, just in a, like, oh. The opening is fantastic. I could talk about the opening for ages. And obviously, it's interlaid with all the hints of what the series is about, what its representations are, and what you could possibly be in for. Naked people? There are naked people in there, yes. But it's some of the other more important things, like, you know, the tree of life. And the, like, is it the diagenesis of an angel? Like, you know, that picture of the first ever kind of angel form. Yeah. So it opens up and it's lovely water effect. Always like a good water effect, like bouncing off the water. And then tanks are plenty. Yep. The big line of tanks. So, you know, it's military. And yeah, even though it's 2015, still futuristic in its look. Modern future, though. So it's like just the turn of the times so, where it's like it's going from the modern to the new yeah well it's been a rapidly modernized city because of the event that happened 15 years ago that they keep like saying you're just looking at me blankly now no i'm looking at my notes <laughs> <laughs> i've jumped i've jumped around my next question was when was it made it says it was set 2015 but i've already done that yeah so it's set <laughs> 2015 and it's 15 years after something known as second impact has happened and yeah, shady government conspiracy is like trying to kind of like, A, be very like, what's, how do we monetize this situation and how can we be a corrupt government agency, really? And they're like going, ah, oh, the angels have returned. And you're seeing this. Is it mean what angels are at this point? Did I miss something? No. Or are we just going, oh, angels, big things. We don't like them. 
Yeah, basically, you're not really meant to know a whole lot until it starts getting pieced together. All you know is weird things called angels have turned up and the military is not doing a very good job of destroying them. They're all up their own arse going, oh, yeah, we dropped a bomb on it. Yeah, we don't need you, Gendo, Mr. Akari. We're, we're fine without you. Oh, oh, dear. We'll admit it. Our weapons are useless. We need you now. And the only person who can use the weapon of mass destruction is his son. Yes. Shinji Agari. Is that a height thing? Or <laughs> No, that's something I can't a hundred percent talk about yet. Because spoilers. We got once it once more pieces of your puzzle have come together. What I will say is the background of this is nineteen ninety five was bam smack in the middle of what's known as the lost decade, which you've heard me probably talk about a million times because it's my favourite period of like contemporary history in Japan. And the lost decade is Basically, around about 1989, but 1991, when the economy did the bubble collapse and things went weird. And it was that period of dissatisfaction that basically you say it starts with the uh, the economy cl- collapsing and films like Battle Royale. It ends the framework around about the sarin gas attacks and shows like Moab Penguin Drum. And this is smack back in this period. In this period of history, it was all about some a movement of dissatisfied youth culture coming back. Because basically, lots and lots of adults lost their jobs, and obviously mostly men. So male father figures were being heavily scrutinised because they'd lost their jobs and they couldn't provide for their families. And obviously Japan has this really, really strict kind of like routine and hegemonic society. And if you can't provide, dishonour your family. And a lot of the time they still had that samurai coding of like, if you dishonour your family, you need to kill yourself. So men who couldn't provide and look after their family were committing suicide. And it was the highest rate of adult male suicide in the world happened during this period. And it kind of like had two things. So this young youth to kind of preteen to teenager like age group came up and they were A, seeing their father figures not going to work and becoming kind of defunct and useless. And in a society built completely on respect and how you must respect your older and especially in, in a family, especially if you're a son, you will one day expect to take over the family business but obviously your father is now like an unemployed alcoholic you like no business that loss of respect so teenagers had started losing respect for adults and then adult society was desperately trying to impose any kind of will and structure onto these teenagers to make them pick up the mantle of work to try and force the cogs to work again to improve the Japanese economy. So it's very much in that framework of satisfied youth. They don't respect their elders anymore, but they're being forced into a position where they are expected to be the next generation that brings in money and prosperity Japan. And a lot of teenagers, a lot, rebelled. And a lot of adults got, well, either committed suicide or became greedy, manipulated bastards. Manipulative bastards. Well, we're kind of feeling that at the moment with the younger generation than us going on at like the older generation and us calling them boomers and stuff like that. And yes, yeah, so it's kind of going full, cir- either full circle or it's just come across the pond. Yeah, I think I think structures have changed. It happened in like Japan. And obviously, we've got a very different thing. If you lose your job, you're not expected to commit suicide. And if you have a child, they're not forced to take on the family name and job and responsibility. Also, we're not a hegemonic society. So the whole the nail that sticks out must be hammered down. We are expected to have no individual purpose other than be the cogwork of Japan and to worship the emperor. Yes, but it doesn't excuse the fact that there are some people who don't respect their elders in this country. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm, 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 <laughs> sa- I'm saying we definitely do have problems. It was just a very uniquely Japanese problem in the 90s. It's, it, cause you can see shades of it now in the rest of the world. So we've seen the angel. We know that we need the kid, Sa- Sin- Shinji. Shinji. Uh, Shinji. And the, the girl comes and picks him up in the car. <laughs> and they boom off and they have some lovely lounge music playing in the background. I love some lounge music. And I'm guessing he could hear what she was thinking. No, no, that's just her. She was just monologuing. Because he was looking at her while she was doing it. So it looked like he it was what he could hear. Uh, no, he's looking at her because she's not talking to him. And he's like, what the fuck is with you and your weird facial expressions? You strange lady that's picked me up in a car. Okay, so that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> not psychic. Cool. No. And then 
during the car, you see him having flashes of story, which is typical for anime, where it's, this will be important later. And you'll forget about this, but then you remember it. And this is going to happen, but you won't know why until it happens. And Yeah, basically, yeah, they needed to make sure you understood that Shinji does not get on with his dad. They had to make sure like he was literally abandoned and the dad walked off so that you've got to know there is not a good relationship there. So he's taken to the place. They're going, hey, you've got to get inside this robot. And he's like, no. And it's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, he's taken to the super secret government organization known as Nerve. Um, yeah. When you saw the Nerve symbol on the door, did you get a chance to read the Nerve catchphrase? No. Oh, it's God is in the heaven, all is right with the world, is their motto. Is their motto. Is their motto. Ah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that plays into things as well. And obviously you get this wonderfully designed cityscape and it's all like under the ground and like this like very like limited city above. And I mean, it's currently being attacked. So, and, but underneath there's like skyscrapers and giant government facilities and artificial light and it's all very like gorgeous and exciting and then he goes and he meets Ava Unit 1 and basically has that moment where his dad is like get in it and he's like is that all you wanted me for I did you not want me did you not have a purpose for me and he's like well I've got a purpose now get in the robot and he's like no <laughs> and he's like fine we'll get you know someone else will call poor ray out of a freaking coma to get in it and ray's not exactly doing well i love ray just tip her out like there you go yeah there she is there he is, yeah but yeah so it's all that yeah they've got some very interesting <laughs> father-son dynamics and it's worth noting that i can't remember when it was but that what a poll on the internet of like worst tv dads was conducted gendo akari won the prize for like the worst dad ever in television because boy is he I a dick yeah worst ever father figure well father ever so in the end he's like yeah fine get in the robot whatever gets in the robot and then this poor kid is thrown into like this horrible situation. He has to breathe in fluids. He has to work the robot with his mind, basically. And he's got these three women shouting at him, going, just do it, walk, rah. He's like, rah. It's like <laughs> The kid has just got in the thing. Like, there, you know, no clear, time. Simple instruction. <laughs> <laughs> no time the situation is dire i mean poor ray was literally in a coma and got woken up to like get, and she can't and so and, you know she's literally bleeding out on the floor by the time she gets tipped off her stretcher so shinji's feeling a bit like well if i don't get in it this poor girl is going to be forced into it and at the same time these women are like they're being adults the whole they're being adults and they're manipulating his child mind into going like if you do this you'll be a hero if if you do this no one else will look at this poor girl that like you've got to, you've got to be better than this oh you'll be saving humanity and it's like oh you just manipulate this poor boy into getting into the plug and then he gets put in and there's oh all this symbolism that with the like the plug fluid and they're like you know what it's meant to represent and the fact that he's got like a nerve connection to the Ava robot. But obviously mm -hmm. you can't find out any of that yet. So then he goes, walkie, walkie, trippy stumble on the floor. Oopsie daisy. Uh, then the angel comes and goes, ha ha, you're mine now. Picks him up, pulls his arm, which is connected to Sinji. So he feels it too. And they're going, it's not real Sinji. Still screaming and shouting at him, bitches. <laughs> uh, <and> then, <laughs> so just calm leave, leave the boy alone he's just had his arm psychologically ripped off call yourselves and then he gets thrown and something goes through the eyeball and then that was the end of that episode yep yep and then oh no it ends, ends with that with no the episode ends with him going i'll do it and having that really like focused look at the ava unit then the next one starts ah. with the fight Right, and then the so dum then... ba dum dushes to the head, and then he right. wakes up in hospital bed with the cicadas, okay. cicadas, have you pronounce them? Go. So, episode two is called Unfamiliar Ceilings. Yeah. Which did make me laugh because did you watch the sub or the dub? I started with um, the dub to hear what the new dub was like, and I heard a bit of it and went, this is kind of a good dub, but I missed the sub. 
I'm more familiar with that. It's worth noting when I first first saw this, when it first came out in the UK, you have to buy a you had to buy it on VHS, and it was fourteen ninety nine a videotape, and you got two episodes on a VHS tape, and there was only the dubs. The first time I watched it through, it was dubbed, and it was a pretty decent dubbed. Then eventually you got the subtitled version, and once you'd heard Shinji's voice acting in that, you were like, at the time, I think it was Spike Spencer was the American voice. After you'd heard the Japanese Shinji and the other characters, you couldn't go back to the dub because it just wasn't as good as that. This this new dub, I, I went back and listened to certain bits of it, important, like, key bits, and I thought, they've done it well, but... I can't help it, I'm a purist, and the option there to watch it subtitled in its beautiful Japanese is there, so I did. Okay, I watched it in dub, obviously. <laughs> and it just made me laugh when he was in the hospital, because it's called Unfamiliar Ceilings, and he lies and goes, I don't recognise that ceiling. <laughs> oh, is that what it says in the dub? In the sub, yeah. he looks up and he goes, another ceiling I don't recognise. Yeah, it's been the lines. Yeah. Been the yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense because, like, he's being thrown into so many different, like, situations and he's just like, ugh. So, yeah, so we find out he's connected to the robot. And it's quite funny because it ends that part of it with the robot just being thrown against the building and it cuts to hit feet in the hospital. And it's like, well, that didn't go well, did it? <laughs> like, that's the feeling that you get yeah. of, from robot to hospital. And then it goes to the news and they're not wanting people to find out about this and they don't want rumours to be spread and they don't want the public knowing more than they should. Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Shady governments. <Yeah. laughs> and um, there was the line, humanity has little time to spare. And I was like, oh, so apt. <laughs> yes. Well, because obviously the angels came once before and nearly wiped humanity out. And so now they're trying to stop them, trying to wipe humanity. Because this is meant to be the last vestige, vestige, vestige. I'm sure that's the word. The last vestige of hope. The city that was meant to be the city that was going to save mankind because they got it so right on how to defend the last of the human race. So then they go, they get Cindy back to nerve, whatever it's called. Um, is it nerve, as in like your nerve endings? Nerve, nerve. No. No. So that makes sense then because he's connected. So yeah, it's all about connections. Yep. And he goes to get in the lift, but then Dad is there. He's like, oh, so Dad goes up in the lift. And they go up the world's longest escalator I have ever seen. <laughs> it's the tallest escalator. I was like, that'll make me fall off it so high. I, mean, I didn't I mean, really notice. I was, I was just, I was too busy admiring the amazing world building and how fully realised this city and the situation and this time frame and everything is put together of all the little details of like when you go down a giant escalator because of the height and stuff. When you go through a next bit, there would be that the wind and the fact that they were obviously like the escalators are going underground, so they're recycling air. So when you go into the next bit, there's an air vent, so they get a little blast of air in the next section and and all these little details but i thought they were going up because when they because then they go on to i'm thinking of a different then. escalator i'm thinking of the yeah. one they took to nerve in the first bit with a whoosh nye, nye. this is the second escalator when they go upwards and then like i say the world's tallest escalator oh yeah because top... you do you, at the time you don't realize that it's underground so they're going yeah. back up to the surface well, they're going higher than the surface because then Tokyo 3 appears and all the buildings appear from underground. And it's like Well, they drive oh, to handy. that bit. They drive in her rickety old car that's like, <laughs> oh, it just had its serviced and now it's falling apart. So that because you see it and you say, what, the, what is this Tokyo? It doesn't because it's major. And then you realise that the whole city's underground and it gets pumped up and it's gorgeous. They think that Sinji should be living with the girl. What's her Misato. name? Misato. Misato. So they reckon that he should be living there because it's safer or you know, better than him being by himself. But well, we no, have... no. Misato convinces the higher-ups to let Shinji stay with her than him living by himself. <laughs> yeah. They think it's that they agree to that because she kind of argues that, like, you know, by himself, he's by himself. But if it's her job to protect him and it's her job to make sure he gets back in an into an Ava, she could do a job much better if he's under the roof, so she can be there to convince him. And yeah. yes, but now he's living with a bipolar aggressive drunk, as I would describe her. Yes, 
yes, that is Masato. She's got reasons, you'll find out. But yeah, it's still safer than being on your own in the apocalypse. And also, they've got to guarantee, because if he lives on his own, there's every chance that he will run away. But if he lives with her, then at least she can go, get back in the robot. Adults are very manipulative in this. It's all for their own personal gain. And then the penguin. Oh, Pen Pen! That's our, pen, pen. pen Pen. That's our anime mascot. That is one aggressive looking penguin. <laughs> His <laughs> eyes just like judgmental and like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotta love Pen Pen. But why? Why is he living with her? And why is he like. That's her pet. Aware. He's aware though. Yeah, he's and also an AI pet. Oh, uh, okay. I think, I don't know, he's either a real penguin with a little bit of cybergenic stuff because he's also got the bat pet. They never really, like, explain that. But I always just went with it's like a virtual pet. It's the future and people need things and anime needs mascots. A fluffy Tamagotchi. Yeah. Basically. I do absolutely adore it. It's still funny to this day when he first meets Pen Pen and then he runs out and there's a beer can and she's like, uh, and then she moves the beer cans and even smaller pot in the way and he's like oh pushing you in your tiny willy <laughs> and she's like uh put some clothes on and he's like ah i'm so busy freaking out about penguin he is a kid you know yeah, he's like... 14 exactly and then yeah i love it when he's in his room and he's listening to a tape player you know first it's 2015 so, and we barely listen to tape players anymore. Yeah. And we're in 2020. I just feel like when <laughs> when you look at future stuff, they don't fully think about something else because surely he would not be listening to a tape player. Well, Walkman were very in vogue in Japan. They're, they're, I think they had tapes lasted longer before the invention of CDs. I think they went to what's it, oh, mini discs players first so it could have been a mini disc player i suppose i don't know i don't know if it's ever explained i was just always assumed that it was a leftover piece of his childhood and his past so instead of getting a new one it was something from his childhood that he's held on to when he was 14 he would have been born in 2001 which even then there was cd players well you've got to remember in the year 2000 the apocalypse happened it kind um, of set back, like, human development. They didn't really uh, focus on, like, CD players when they were trying to rebuild civilization and protect humanity and uh, create giant robots. They decided, uh, you know what, giant robots or a new CD player? <laughs> what should happen? So then he's lying in his bed and he's remembering back. And then we get to see the rest of the fight. So the robot bleeds. Yes. So it's clearly not a robot. And he rips off the angel's arms, throws him around. Angel self-destructs. Robot survives. Yes. And then it has a vagina eye. Okay, so. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> it is not a robot. The well, term, that. The t- no, the term is a mecha. Oh, what? The term <laughs> is a mecha because mecha means mechanicized, like, structure and this is where things get really interesting and why Ava is such like a a game changer in the anime scene before Mecha was a power suit or a way to be an extension of your body during various battles and stuff Um, Ava I can't tell too much because this is for later but Ava was a the first type you saw a new kind of Mecha which is why it was the first ever title that was described as new wave Mecha so the genre of new wave mecha this was the first ever title in this new genre so yes the the thing is is like it's not the first time like because robots and mechas because you've seen enough cyberpunk to know that cybergenic people exist so you could also automatically think of this as a giant cyborg alita you know was most yeah was a cyborg herself like but they bleed because it could have been hinted that that could have been the release of the fluid also if it was a robot as you say or a mecha then it would have had fluid inside it like oil or whatever energy source so it's not until you see the eye regenerate that you realize that there's something bioorganic underneath the structure of the metallic skin but what you'll have to find out later 
and then, and then the, yeah, and then then there's the Shinji scream. The, no voice actor has ever screamed the way that I mean the, the scream, especially in certain points during the series, is and I think in the movie is absolutely blood curdling when he screams. I did watch the dub scream to see if he screams as well as the Japanese, and it's like it's a better scream than the original. I'll give him that. But there is, there's nothing compared to the way the Japanese actor screams at certain point during the show. And then episode three. Uh, well, that will happen next in our next yeah. session. This is just basically problem. all set up and lots of set up. There's so much. It's just like it's a very rich series. Did you notice what happened when the angels set off explosions? The shape of all the explosions. They were in crosses. Yes. Haha, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did notice that. And I did was going to write that down as a note, but I didn't. But yeah, when they do it on the floor, it goes up and across. And yep. when in the air, it went up and across. So yeah. Yes. You'll mm. find out what that means later. Well, they're angels. It's all religious, surely. Yes, but you'll find out just what later. But there's, yeah, a lot of religious symbolism. And um, did you see from the opening credits what AT field stands for? So obviously, no. Unit 1 rips the AT field. AT stands for Absolute Terror. So it's the Absolute okay. Terror field. And the angels give off such a force of terror that it's crystallised into this field that humans cannot penetrate because it's absolute terror. But Unit 1 was able to corrupt, in the subtitles it's called corrupt and corrode this field. Like, it's first they say they're sinking. It's like, no, it's not sinking, it's corroding. So it uses its own power to overpower the field to, to tear it apart, which means that whatever energy that Ava was giving off was more terrifying than the angel's absolute terror. That is the first two episodes of Neon Genesis. Evangelion. Oh, so good. The animation looks so beautiful still. And all the details of all the mechanics and the way they move and stuff, they put so much attention to detail into it. It is scoring. funny that anime has gone for so long and yet the style hasn't really changed to, to the point that you can't tell when it's been made. You know, I wouldn't have said that that was a 90s, 90s anime. I would have said it was more modern. But Yeah, well, you've got when it came out, it was seriously like for its time, we were all just like, holy moly, this is some impressive stuff. Like, it really looked like cutting edge. And it's and the thing is, so it's it's dated incredibly well. I see modern animation that doesn't look as good as something that was made in 1995 to 6. It's, it's gorgeous. I also think the scoring is gorgeous. It has this mixture of kind of modern, like, music, its own, like, scoring that really gives you that sense of dread when it needs to be but it also uses classical pieces of well-known scoring in there to give it a sense of the familiar when something really unfamiliar is happening i guess what i was trying to say in a really bad way is that anime is timeless like yeah you could watch that any time and it would still feel like it was made this year sort of thing yeah which yeah. is i'm glad i'm glad you're getting that vibe out of it because this is obviously one of my all-time favorite shows so it's nice for you thinking oh this is quite timeless i'm like yes yes it is and strangely apt for the exact time we've decided to record it in yes <laughs> cool. let's just keep ourselves busy with netflix and our podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at the Netflix anime and there's not a lot of movies on there and not a lot of movies you can watch without context because they're all films that are based on long running series. So you'd watch this movie and go, oh, Dragon Ball Z Super Broly. Well, that's going to make so much sense to me if I've never seen an episode of Dragon Ball Z and have no idea who any of these people are, like the sequel to this and like, you know, the film that bridged the gap between series one and series two of Blue Exorcist. You'd be going cool <laughs> like but Ava is such an amazing piece it's worth I am sad because there was definitely some films I wanted you to see before it just so that you could have got an idea of what because this is a this is Tokyo 3 which is obviously like a neo Tokyo a neo apocalypse which is very much a thing that came about after Akira and I, was, I wanted to show you Akira first just so you could see what that that Japanese neo apocalyptic future kind of vision and the original Ghost in the Shell I do need to see that because that is such a uh, poignant movie that everyone talks about. Well, you have to see Akira first because obviously it was the one that got 
the world like going, what is this? And then Ghost in the Shell came out a little bit later. But yeah, I wanted you to see those two key films first since they're like, you know, 1991 and the bit before. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My fangirl knowledge has just died then. As we are in lockdown and there's lots of things that, you know, to watch and everything, is there anything that you would like to suggest, not necessarily anime, that you have seen in the last weeks that you've been on your sofa? <laughs> Unable <laughs> to like... watch. <laughs> well, I, you like to suggest? I mean, obviously being like an anime channel, I, I would kind of, <laughs> I would probably keep mostly because I've been watching really bad anime on Netflix going, why why am I watching this? I've watched some good, um, I watched some good thrillers. I watched Gone Girl for the first time. Good psychological mm-hmm. thriller. Oh, if you want to see an amazing Indonesian action film, it's called um, The Night Comes For Us. The Night Comes For Us. It's an Indonesian action film. And I think the director worked on The Raid, which is also one of the best ever Indonesian action films. And then after the success of The Raid, whatever, he went off and made his own movies and he made that. And oh, it's like 18 rated, brutal martial arts movie about revenge. And I watched it last night going, oh, and this is why Asian cinema is so good. Yeah, that's excellent. And then I spend the rest of my time, because I'm a really happy person. I have watched nothing but like action movies. Like I watched all three John Wick films. And then I watched the Indonesian, the, yeah, The Night Comes For Us. And then I watched like an 18 rated, like, you know, Thriller and Gone Girl. And then I watched a couple of horror movies because, again, I'm a happy chappy and likes everything to be horrible. And I also watched Miraculous Ladybug and the adventures of, yeah, Miraculous Ladybug and Cat Noir, which was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And now I have to wait. I just got Disney Plus today, literally. So I'm like, oh, (laughs) so much choice. So I might be Disneying out for a little bit. But I think, yeah, those are my pretty much my main recommendations at the moment. What about you? I I would say if you have Prime... The American Office. Apparently, that is the most watched thing at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think because there's so many episodes, um, and yeah, it's all free on Prime, so <laughs> everyone's watching it. But I have been watching The Middle. Uh, huh. It's a comedy about a family and their shenanigans, and every single episode I can relate to something they do. I can say that's uh, my partner, or that's my parents, or that's his parents. Or that's a friend I know. Every single episode, they are so relatable, and the actors are so fantastic in it. And it's just something that if you need something light-hearted, you need to have a laugh. Go for that. So if you want the opposite of my taste, go. Yeah. And punch. So if you don't go want really harsh thrillers, beat 'em ups, and horror films, <laughs> with a bit of lightheartedness, go to Prime and watch The Middle or The American Office because they are just silly and they're they're really. I'm nearly finished with the middle. I've, there's eight series, eight or nine series, and I'm nearly at the end. I'm so sad. I'm trying to watch them too quickly. Oh, that's it. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is, because it's over eight or nine series, and you see them basically going up, I'm going to watch the last episode and then go watch the first episode and see ah. how because a lot of them started when they were kids. So, yeah, I thought it would be fun to do. But, yes, if you want a comedy... The middle. That's my okay. week. If you want to see what I'm watching, I'm always posting it on Twitter going, oh my God, I found this thing to watch. It's amazing. Watch it too. Speaking of Twitter, here is Lizzie's uh, social media. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> do, do, do. It's the same thing multiple times. Wow. Let Zoe spoil you for pretty much yeah. everything. Unless you want to see my art. And then it's just Zoe let or let Zoe. Pow, pow. <laughs> Put some fireworks in. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, now I'm going to put fireworks in it. No, you don't. You need to do some like cross shaped explosions. Just go, pew, pew. pew. Oh, no. Symbolic. I want symbolic explosions. <laughs> They're going to look rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that apt at uh, <laughs> editing. Um, and then my social media. Ba, 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 ba. Here's my social media. Where is it? Ooh, it's over here. Ooh, it's over here. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going a bit crazy in my house. <laughs> you haven't even been as off as long as I have. I'm about to hit my fourth week. 
And now I can't I leave the house. Before I couldn't physically leave the house. Now they're like, oh, don't socialise in more than groups of two. Whereas like, well, it's only me and my husband. And we left the house yesterday because I decided I desperately wanted beer. <laughs> and it's like, if I can't go anywhere, the least I could do is sit on my sofa and drink beer. And then get carried to bed. I add up. Okay. So that's another episode done for this week. So sign off. Oh, so from a weeaboo, it's John A. And from a newbie, it's see you next time. Bye. Bye.